Me Too movement has brought to light the extensiveness of the way in which women have been abused and mistreated by men. This, of course, has caused great consternation in all walks of life, not least, unfortunately, in the church, where some well-known, other lesser-known church leaders have found themselves falling in this particular area of moral rectitude. The question is, what should the response of the church be when those in positions of leadership in the church abuse their power, particularly in their relationships to women? Well, that's a profoundly important uh, question, and uh, I can only answer it uh, very briefly. T Timothy uh, was in a position of leadership in the Ephesian church. He was a young man. Uh, he had a rather timid disposition, and uh, fortunately, he had a mentor in the Apostle Paul. And Paul, among other things, wrote letters to Timothy uh, about leadership in the church. We call them first uh, epistle of Paul to Timothy and the second epistle of Paul to Timothy. And uh, there's much material in there that deals uh, with uh, Christian leadership and also uh, deals specifically about a male Christian leader's responsibility in their relationship with the women uh, in the church where they minister. So this is a, a fertile uh, play, place for people to turn to in scripture to answer questions like this. Let me start out by saying that uh, Paul is unequivocal writing to Timothy and he says that a Christian leader should be without reproach. In other words, there is an expectation of there being spiritual quality and moral rectitude in the life of those who aspire to leadership in the Christian church. And that, that is a given. That, that idea of the Christian leader being without reproach uh, is, is something that pervades the whole of Paul's writings to Timothy. In addition to that, Paul says that the Christian leader should have a good reputation outside the church as well. So without reproach in the church and a good reputation outside the church. Uh, Paul also goes on to explain to uh, Timothy that if a Christian leader uh, is failing uh, in this standard to which he is called and is engaging in sinful activities or activities that are totally unacceptable, uh, they should not be swept under the carpet. In fact, he, he goes in exactly the opposite direction, far from covering up uh, the failures and the, uh, and the fall of a Christian uh, leader, uh, t Paul tells Timothy uh, this, this sin has to be exposed, and there's a reason for that. He said that the, the leader has to be exposed in his sin so that the people in the church will learn from the, the, the fact that even a leader uh, has to bear the consequences of bad behavior. In other words, this issue of Christian leaders uh, failing has to be addressed uh, so that the people who are following those leaders can realize how important it is that they themselves are seeking to live without reproach and uh, with a good reputation in, uh, in, in the society around them outside the church. Well, that, that's, that's the basic answer to the question, what should we, we sh what should be done? But rather than uh, talk just about what do we do when the thing goes wrong, I think we should be concentrating on what we do uh, to make sure as much as we're able to ensure that, th that things do not go wrong. And Paul, Paul has some very succinct instructions uh, for Timothy in this regard. For instance, he says, if, if one of the leaders who is an older man engages in activity that is unacceptable, then a, a younger person of responsibility, if they, have, if they need to speak to the older person, they should do it with grace. They, they should 
uh, do it in, uh, in, the, in the way that they might talk to their father about something uh, important. In, in other words, they don't go barreling into this older person. They do it with a considerable degree of respect, but deal with the issue nevertheless. So uh, Paul, Paul says to Timothy, you, you have to treat the older person uh, who has sinned like, like a father. Then he says, and you're to treat the older women in the church as mothers. And then he says, and you're to treat the younger men in the church as brothers. And then he says, and this is particularly important, I think, in the context we're talking about here, it says, and you are to treat the younger women as sisters with absolute purity. And that's it. That's what we should be focusing on in the Christian community. Those men who are in positions of responsibility in the Christian community will have to deal with older women and younger women and older men and younger men. And Paul very succinctly tells us how to go about this, even dealing with difficult issues with them. But I love the expression here that the older man in, in a position of responsibility and leadership in the church should be looking at the younger women in the congregation and treating them like sisters with absolute purity. The quick answer, and this may not be quick enough for some of you, is this. If a male leader abuses his relationship with women in the church, that has to be called, it has to be exposed, discipline has to be exercised, and it has to be done in such a way that the congregation realizes this is an acceptable behavior for leaders and for those who follow their lead. And secondly, what we're trying to emphasize is we're not just thinking in terms of remi re remedies. We are thinking of proactive ways of making sure that the men in leadership don't get into these situations. And the very simple text from Scripture would be, older men in Christian leadership are to treat younger women like sisters with absolute purity. <laughs>